this is the other Ata, the one with the roller. Let's see if we can get this one going. See you in a minute. Right, welcome to part five of my worst lawnmower in the world challenge. As you've probably seen with the Flymo, uh, I'm awaiting some spare parts for that. I've got a new spark plug coming for that and also a new air filter. So I'm going to hold fire on that until I get them because I want to definitely know that I've got the right spark there. So until we get them spares, I thought I'd just drag up this hater. This is the uh, rear rollered one. And let me just show you around this. This one's actually in the right state, but uh, I'm hoping we can get it going. So let's have a little closer look at it. Right, well, as you can probably see, it has been uh, totally neglected, this one. I've not tipped this one up, actually. Let's have a little look underneath it. Well, it looks like it's an aluminium deck. It doesn't look too bad underneath, to be honest with you. The blade needs cleaning. It's uh, not been hit by the looks of it, so um, I'm hoping that's gonna be okay. And as you can see, it's got a rear roller at the back. Hopefully, being it's a Briggs & Stratton mower, it should be a matter of removing the carb as you've seen in the previous videos and uh, hopefully giving the carb a good service. Hopefully it will turn over, but I haven't got a handle for this one. But uh, first of all, I'm gonna clear some of this rubbish away first. Take the air filter, take the carb off as you've seen me do in the, another video. I'll put you on a time that's why I'm doing that and I'll see you in a minute when we got it stripped down. Right, okay then, so I've stripped this down as far as I really need to to do a basic general service on it. And as you can probably see, you don't actually have to strip down a lot. And let me show you the parts I've actually taken off at the moment. Well, as you can see, we've got the exhaust, we've got the air filter there, and literally you've got one, two, three, four, five bolts and a little bracket, and that's all you've got to do. Depending on what type of uh, Briggs & Stratton motor you've got in this design, it will either have metric bolts in it or it'll have uh, imperial bolts. The metric bolts being predominantly 10 and 13 mil, or if you've got the imperial one, it will be the 5.8 and the half inch. And that was really all I really needed to do to take this down to this sort of stage. So as you can see now, it is in a bit of a state, this motor. So I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time now getting some uh, white spirit or cleaning fluid on it, give it a bit of agitation, then I'm gonna blow it off and then we can actually see where we are. This one, as you can probably see, the governor spring is actually not working correctly because it's rusted, so this will never operate correctly. I will have to address that. And also, this model has only got the one spring attached there. It's got a cable-operated uh, throttle on this one, which comes and attaches down the, the front of this lever here and moves this backwards and forwards. So it's an older style one, this, but um, hopefully we can salvage it. And yeah, let me clean it all off and then we can start the reassembly. Looking a lot cleaner now. I'm going to address this issue with the sticking governor arm there. So far I've just loosened it off and it's actually freed it off but um, what's happened is, is that it's got rust underneath it and it's one of the laminates is actually separated there as you can probably see. That can cause the tolerance to change and that could be what's tightening it up. And if that is the case I'll just trim a little bit off of the bottom here 
so that it allows for that loose laminate either that or you could replace the actual coil as well but i'm not going to do that in this case so as you can see i've tightened it back down again that delamination is causing a problem with friction so i'm going to reduce the uh height of the actual governor vane and that should hopefully solve the problem right so as you can probably see there the bolt actually sticks through now with a bit of a uh, play there so if i just put that back on now as you can see we've got a nicely moving governor arm and that should now no longer cause us problems right one thing i haven't checked yet is the oil in this and uh now she comes well not even on the dipstick there so we're gonna have to put some oil in this it's got oil in it but obviously not enough so um now this is an old briggs and stratton type carb i haven't actually got a gasket and diaphragm for this type so what i may have to do is to actually change this over for a new carb i'm not sure yet i will take these screws out and have a look at it so we will clean it up first and i'm hoping that if this isn't repairable i can um, change this with one of my other type Briggs and Stratton carbs. So I'll give it a clean down first of all and um, see where we go from there. Right, okay then, I've given it a good uh, clean up. I've never actually worked on one of these Briggs and Stratton carbs before. It feels very weighty in there. I don't know why that is. I'll know when I take the top off. It's got five screws, so we'll remove them. Right, so hopefully that's it. Get a bigger screwdriver. Oh, that was stuck. Right, let's lift this off. So if I lift that out of there, we've got this diaphragm there with a spring on top of it which sits over that chamber. On the bottom, we have another spring which appears to attach via some sort of plunger in here. So I've got to undo this. This is a totally different carb setup uh, than the modern Briggs and Stratton ones and it's a lot more fiddly. There we go, and that reveals an arm in there, as you can see, which is actually connected to the diaphragm. So I think we just pull it out of there, and then that releases the diaphragm. And as you can see, it's totally bone dry in here. I'm looking at there's a jet there which looks to be blocked. I may be wrong, but uh, we'll look at that in a minute. And this is the diaphragm. Hopefully, it appears to be okay. So I'm hoping to be able to utilize that again I'll give that a clean with some carb cleaner and a blowout. I'll just give this a good clean out with some carb cleaner now. Blow it all out and hopefully just reassemble that and that should be fine. Right, okay, I've now performed the delicate procedure of cleaning it. I've uh, blasted everything out that I could. So I'm going to gently try and reassemble this now with this old diaphragm and let's hope it does the job. I'll put you on time lapse for that. Right, okay then, that's the carb service to the best of my ability with what I've got available. I haven't got no diaphragms or anything. So let's put this back on, top the oil up, just clean the, clean the spark plug up, put that back in, and let's see what we can get, see if we can get it to fire. Right, okay, we're nearly there. I'm just gonna put some petrol in it. Right, let's get it down on the floor. Well, I might be able to do it myself, I'm not too sure. And here we go. <laughs> Stop it down on the floor first. Would it have if I put the plug cap on, wouldn't it? Right. And there'll be no fuel in it, obviously, so. Oh! Oh, I like that. This is where someone said it would be handy to have um, 
a drill to style it up. I've got to get an adapter made up for that. Is that a throttle in there? Is that a speed adjustment in there? Ah, <sighs> well, the problem I've got here now is that obviously I haven't got any spares for this type of carburetor, but as it's a Briggs and Stratton typical classic engine, I've got a spare carb and fuel tank set up. So, what I'm going to do uh, is just literally change the carb over, put this one on, and hopefully that should get it running. I'm hoping so anyway. I've put a new carbon diaphragm in here, and also a new primer bulb. This was just an old carb I had laying about. So stick with me. I'm just gonna take this off, put this one on, and let's hopefully get this running. And purely, the only reason I'm doing this, as I said, is because I haven't got any gasket or service kits for this type of carb. Although it's a Briggs and Stratton, this is a very old type and I don't carry the gaskets for these. So let's get stripping down, let's get this on and let's try and get this thing fired up. Right. Try again. And there we go, got it running. Um, it's gonna need refurbishment, obviously. Need a bit of tweaking to that carb, and uh, I might have to fit the new governor arm off of the other motor I took the carb off, because this has got a different size governor arm vein on it, so um, I'll have a look at that. And as you can see, if you carry spares for a certain type of lawnmower, that's why we most, mostly concentrate on this one here, and uh, that's why I carry a sort of spares for it. So this can now be restored and we can sort the um, little teething problems we got with it still when we come to restore it. That'll be in a later video though. As far as the Flymo is concerned, a lot of you are interested in the Flymo. I'm waiting for a new plug to come for that, the correct plug. Uh, a lot of you have left some good comments and all that and uh, stuff that I've actually done in the video, which you probably missed if you've been skipping through the video. I did heat the plug up, someone mentioned try heating the plug up. A lot of people seem to think that the compression test is okay at 80 PSI on the two stroke mower and a few of you have said that that's a little bit too low with a two-stroke mower. I'm still not 100% happy with that primer bulb. I think it might still be sucking in air. I'll be checking that in a later video. Once I've got a few more parts, which I've put on order, and uh, then we can take that one step further. So look out for that video. But uh, yeah, we've got this one running now. And that's ready for restoration. I think we've only got one more mower in this segment and then I'm gonna actually start re restoring these mowers. So let's hope we can get the fly mower running. And they're quite expensive mowers actually. There's a few of them on eBay at the moment here in the UK. And for spares or repair, they're pulling sort of good money just to spares or repairs. Anyway, glad you like these videos and I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit the old subscribe button. If you like our videos, leave a comment below. Do get involved, we do like your comments, we do read all your comments. And we'll see you again in the next video and until then, Bye for now.